Welcome back to our continuing exploration of statistical mechanics. We have been studying interacting systems, the systems that allow us to explain the natural phenomena and though we actually model the different natural phenomena by certain uh, approximations and certain pictures and things which then goes into theory of uh, become uh, matured into a theory over the over the many decades and years. So, in the theory we just were doing uh, osmotic pressure, we are doing binary mixture and uh, which is a phenology that came from the experimental observation that you need to put a pressure to stem the stop the flow of uh, solvent, pure solvent to the solution and that of course, is a consequence of interaction between solute and solvent, but we did not have any experimental uh, estimation of the magnitude of this interaction. And osmotic pressure allows us the, the magnitude of the osmotic pressure allows us to do that, but how we did not know. So, that was the theory of Macmillan and Mayer who developed a detailed theory uh, which is the extension of Mayer's theory of uh, uh, real gases and phase transition in terms of Mayer's cluster expansion that we have done in great detail and that is why the uh, Mayer's theory played a very important role because it allowed us to think in terms of interaction in terms of the decomposed into two particle, three particle, four particle interactions. Then uh, uh, Macmillan Mayer took that to theory of solutions and uh, then they explained that ok, this could be the expression of uh, osmotic pressure. In the process, they derived the osmotic pressure of the ideal gas law, then it exactly become osmotic pressure equal to RT just pi becomes CRT and C is the concentration of the solute. Or a, a, a RT x solute, mole fraction of the solute, which is just the ideal gas law. So, that so the Macmillan and Mayer could derive the ideal gas law, just like you derive the ideal gas law from elementary statistical mechanics. Then they what they did was what Mayer did, they derived a virial series, but in the process they introduced an a, a effective interaction. Now, that immediately give you the idea that then I can if I could really play around with that, play with that, I would be able to get an estimate of the effective interaction very sought after quantity between two solid molecules from osmotic pressure the way Leonard Jones built his potential from second real coefficient. But when you try to do that the, in the Leonard Jones way the second real coefficient he used what Mayard gave that is B2 is the integration over the Mayer f function f r which is exponential minus u r by k b t minus 1. So, that is the effective interaction. So, w a r and that I can also explain in terms you know and the experimental another verification of that is the radial distribution function how two molecules a and e are connected to each other which we get from neutron scattering we can estimate how molecules are arranging with respect to each other. That is one another uh, way, another tool to get into the intermolecular correlations, how molecules are arranged with respect to each other. So, that the radial distribution function, how A in a binary mixture A molecules are uh, uh, placed around A molecules, B molecules are placed around B and A molecules are placed around B. These are the radial distribution functions or partial radial distribution function. In pure case, we call it just radial distribution function GR. But they are dependent on intermolecular interactions, they are dependent on this effective interaction of Macmillan Mayer or which is a flowy parameter as we discussed. But how do you go about it? Okay, I told you and will show that experimentally we get an estimate of that directly through structure factor which which was first time became available after second world war. 
through neutron scattering when neutron beams become available. In the, these days complex system we also get through x-ray, solids we always got through x-ray, but the present day development allows random systems also through x-ray because x-rays have become now very intense from synchrotron. So, these are more more recent developments in the last 10, 15 years that high, high intensity x-ray and getting structure of random liquids from uh, x-ray, but before we did only through neutron. So, now we need several theories, we need to understand how do I discuss radial distribution function, which I tell you gives you a uh, arrangement of the molecules one uh, the all the molecules around one one tagged molecule one specified molecule one chosen molecule and then the neutral scattering. So, this is the what will be the topic of today's lecture and we will be able to do it again it has been done in uh, quite great detail in uh, this book and we probably will not do a great justification of this beautiful subject of theory of liquid but it is done you know much more in this uh, in this book. However, uh, we, we will be able to take you through the basic understanding, the basic physics, basic phrenology, the basic aspects of the field to give you a, an intuitive feeling and also certain amount of workings of the theory. Now, this uh, picture here is an interesting picture which we obtained from uh, one of J. D. Barnell's co-worker, he was a wonderful person, Professor J. D. Barnell uh, and he was the first to really map this the obtained structure of polymers, proteins, many of the things from X-ray. He is called the father of you know could be considered one of the father of the biological crystallography ok. So, this person J D Barnell is doing here is, is he built a structure of uh, liquid water and uh, he uh, then playing around it and seeing how does this many of these things work with. Uh, but the, what is famous for this um, J D Barnell is this following experiment and this has a the first thing of theory of liquids. He took a big jar and then he put lot of marbles, lot of marbles, spherical marbles and he jam packed them. Then he did something really interesting. Then he put, he poured uh, some sticky paint like ink or money stick ink and that goes inside this uh, all pervades through all through. But then he could take out and see around a sphere where are the other molecules because that is where the, the this ink has not gone through. So, he will find on the surface of the molecule there are patches like that. From that he would find out what is the arrangement of molecules around that marble. From that he calculated he found a radial distribution function and when long long later in computer simulation hard sphere potential. radial distribution function was indeed calculated by computer simulation is very difficult to do these things analytically. Now, we have some methods analytical methods it have found that the radial distribution function the number of molecules number of molecules around is G r he found is nothing of course, there could be nothing inside here 0 then there is certain this arrangement goes like that and like that first peak second peak Barnell got it almost exactly correct. So, that was the beauty of first experiments of J D Barnell. So, J D Barnell is the father rightly called the father of the theory of liquid structure. He is the one who, who experimentally measured by this 
very smart simple experiment the radial distribution function around hot spheres ok. Let go around. Now statistical mechanics uh, at that time it was still at infancy because we had started having some equations Jerry Bernal did that thing 1935 and our beginning of the theory of liquid started in 1939 or 1940s when the Yovon in France, Kirkwood in United States, uh, Born in uh, Max Born in Germany, and they started putting a theory of liquids together by using the methods of statistical mechanics. It is probably not surprising that all of these things followed the pioneering work of Fowler and Guggenheim in 19 late 20s and early 30s and then the pioneering work of Joseph Mayer in 1937. So, this work of Fowler, Guggenheim and Mayer opened really a floodgate and people started seeing how to do a theory of liquids in terms of the interaction potential. So, basic aim is I give you an interaction potential and you give me a structure of liquids. And what do we mean by structure of liquids? We mean the radial distribution function. We mean that water the probability of having one molecule and another molecule and that will go directly into the radial distribution function will go back and forth in these things. Because sometimes the structure of a book the way it is developed does not do a good justice to the neither the historical development nor the uh, driving force inherent in any field. So, so microscopy thermodynamic properties, partition, all these things, the statistical mechanics that we have all done with many, many times. Now, neutron scattering experiment gives you molecular arrangement. This is what I am saying. So, neutron scattering gives you a cross section called SK, the structure factor that is S comes from that gives you molecular arrangement and molecular arrangement is nothing, molecular arrangement molecular arrangement is nothing but gr so neutron structure give me gr radial distribution function that i am going to talk about now then all the thermodynamic properties can be in terms of gr and there are lots of equations that have been derived which are of some importance if for a theory of liquids but on a course of this kind we might not spend too much time on that because you know it is this lecture should be viewed as a stepping stone or an uh, intermediate between a book of physical chemistry like Atkins, Castell and Moore, Glaston. From that book, the contents into the real world of research and statistical mechanics and computer simulation. So, this is kind of connect these, these many, many things. So, in you should take this course in that spirit that we are going to give you an understanding and a motivation of what we do. Okay. So, now this is again schematic representation of interactions we are talking that here you can see two particles interacting, then three particles interacting, but by three particle interaction I do not mean a three body interaction potential, I just mean that three particles are there. So, the interaction potential is could be represented pairwise additive, some of this interaction, this interaction and this interaction. So, a now any given microscopic configuration configuration of uh, a given at a given time, a snapshot of a liquid is a very primitive and uh, approximate because everything is spheres, one component, atomic all these things. But if that captures such huge amount of phenology and huge amount of macroscopic phenomena that it is really is the kind of a D model, the benchmark model of statistical mechanics that we play our theories and gain our understanding and then extend to complex system. So, basic idea is that if I can understand and describe this system, I can describe complex system very simply. So, these kind of interactions now are present. I know how to consider this interaction in terms of Leonard Jones potential. I have a basic idea how these structures are though I do not have the microscopic uh, information. Now, I want to know that if I give you the density, temperature, pressure and the interaction potential, can you give me, if I give you UR, can you give me GR? If I give you interaction potential, can you give me the radial distribution function? That is the whole question and how to get that. 
that is the aim of this uh, and this lecture ok. Let then go ahead. So, the basic flow chart again I am very much a fond of flow chart, but unfortunately for you this flow chart will not be too much of a useful, but still let us go through it that we start everything which I have not told you is called a equation is called Liouville equation and that is the Liouville of n particle then that means you have n particle hold n particle distribution in position and time. This is what uh, Boltzmann tried to do. These are n particles. An equation of motion of that is a Liouville equation by Liouville operator. We have not to told you about that. That can be reduced essentially into an equation called BBGKY equation, which goes to equilibrium is E of one bond green equation. Okay. Now what we want to do that the radial how do we talk of radial distribution functions. So, radial distribution functions as I said that I have this kind of molecules and I tag one molecule and now I want to tell the liquid is homogeneous, there is no heterogeneity anywhere. Uh, when we say homogeneous what do we mean? We mean that if I follow a local I, I make a cubic grid, I make a grid. Uh, this is something what probably spending a little time that I have this big thing and I make it into small grids and now a grid is such that it has 10, 12 molecules that is kind of size. That means it is a, a 2 molecular diameter here, 2 molecular diameter here and 2 molecular diameter in a cube and that has as I tell you 10, 12 but maybe 20 molecules. If I make a system a grid like that then now I can mentally just like we construct an ensemble. Uh, and ergodic hypothesis all this stuff, we can look into it which they say I have a microscope and I counting number of atoms and molecules into that grid. When I say homogeneous, I say that this grid over a time averaging long time has the same number of molecules of a grid of the same size. That is what homogeneous means that they are the same. So, there is no heterogeneity that means no permanent long term uh, one region has more density than the other region. So, we are talking of homogeneous system. Now, in such a homogeneous system, I now want to describe what is the probability of, uh, I, I want to describe the structure and as I have repeatedly saying the way of getting the structure is how many molecules are there at certain distance r. So, I have a molecule here, then I say okay, I give you a distance r and I can now give a small shell around that, my picture uh, similar to grid and what is the probability or how many molecules will be in that grid? If I know how many molecules in the grid at a distance centered at a distance r, I construct a shell, then I will be knowing about the molecular arrangement about my central molecule. I know how many molecules are there and that really tells me many, many things that will tell me what is the cage, what is the cage around my central molecule. This is called caging or cage structure. In a liquid because of high density, as we discussed the density of liquid, remember by introducing quantity rho star as rho sigma cube and sigma is molecular diameter and that is very large is about 0.8 typically while crystal is 1. So, uh, the liquid is a very dense system, but it is random, but I need to know how many, how many molecules are around my uh, and how, at what distance they are. If I know that then I will be able to calculate quantities like diffusion, I will be able to calculate quantities like um, um, viscosity and many other properties and that will have come very handy when I want to do chemical reactions because how two, two reactants come close together, where are they placed that will give me an idea of the rate of the chemical reaction or they will give me about the solvation structure, how one uh, dye molecule is solvated, how, how, how a reactant is solvated in water is very important to know that in order to know the many properties. So, what we are beginning to do is to beginning to take a shot at those kind of things. So, coming back again continuing with my picture here, this uh, picture of uh, um, how many molecules are there in a shell. This I now say okay number of molecules in a shell if this volume, the volume is 4 pi if at a distance r then volume of that shell is 4 pi r square and width is delta r of my shell or delta, this is the volume of the shell. So, now if I say probability 
of finding a molecule at R is this quantity GR whom I call radial distribution function. Then that gives me number of molecule at a distance n. So, this is a wonderful relation that number of molecules at in a shell at a distance r total number is volume of the shell which is 4 pi r square delta, delta is the width of the cell 4 pi r square delta and gr. Then gr gives me the probability of finding a molecule at a distance r and gr is the radial distribution function which is the central quantity of the theory of liquids. So, now how do you go about it? How do you go about to calculating the cage? Okay. We do what we have done before, we are taught to do, we write down a Hamiltonian, this is the momentum term and the total amount of potential energy and total potential energy, this should be small u again, mu ri. The probability of in this case is the, so I want now the probability, what are the prob locations, what is the probability, where are the molecules distributed, with what uh, momentum, complete distribution, complete equilibrium distribution of all the n particles. I do not know what I will do with it, but let me think about it. That will be PR and PN that is very trivial by I know it is a to the minus beta h. So, I give you one particular configuration that I my, my molecules oh, first molecule is in R1, second molecule in R2, third molecule is in R3, fourth molecule is in R4, fifth molecule is in R5 or like that n molecules in n positions I give you that. So, I give you locations of each molecules. You can exchange the classical systems, nothing much, nothing changes here. But given the positions, I can now calculate the interaction potential, this quantity. Now, I have the also momentum, uh, position, uh, all the momentum, momentum gives me kind of energy. So, this is what actually the equation does is the time dependence of things. I am suddenly bringing the equation because we had one slide on the equation. We will talk of the equation slightly, not much because it is a uh, more complex and the level which probably we are not going to take this course to. Okay. So, this is my Boltzmann distribution in a general sense with all the molecules and this is the partition function. Now, let me see if I do things correctly here, the part, then I go to configuration integral that we have done in Mayer's theory, then this is the configuration integral with beta u, this is just kinetic energy term is taken out and kinetic energy term goes into um, this de Broglie then. So, now I can be little bit more, I have removed the, I have factored out momentum taken out because of classical system I can take momentum taken out. Then I have this equation, it is the same thing, I am just saying probability of molecules at given positions one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven molecules. Say I give their positions with respect to a coordinate system, which can be corner of the box or any external reference systems. I know all the positions, and if I know the position of each particles, I know the interaction energy and then this is the configuration integral. So, this is the complete com P R n P n put whatever you want is the complete this n particle distribution. Is a complete distribution. This is all the information that we need, but it is very difficult to get. It is a hugely difficult quantity to get. And now we are going to simplify the things because we most of the time experiments and theory and all our applications we did not need. We don't need the full n particle distribution. I don't need to know where e each particle is there. I need to know much reduced description. I need to know how many molecules around one molecule that is the radial distribution function, not the complete distribution. Well, complete distribution is very good quantity, very noble quantity, uh, but uh, we do not need that in our uh, theory and applications and equations that we derive that quantity does not come. Okay. Of course, if I know that then I know GR, but we need GR, we do not need the full thing. 
So, now it is defined in the following way just as you could expect that the uh, that this is the full distribution function. So, in order to get a reduced distribution by the lower dimension distribution of fewer particles what I need to do I need to do integrate out I need to ok I do not need you. So, I need the, uh, all the other so I need smaller number. So, instead of P n n in, in part, uh, position of n particles all the n particles of all the molecules of n particle system. So, one is the number of particles in the system other is distribute order of the distribution function I do not need that. So, but however, I do I am continuing with classical mechanics that means I am saying ok in this huge number of particles there I want this, this and this 1, 2, 3 where are they? I am not yet I am now still specifying n and so then I would integrate out all the other ones I will integrate out right I will integrate out that I will integrate out that. So, what I will do I will just erase these guys I will I have integrate them out or I will fill them up in our earlier uh, uh, in Agumia theory thing. So, I, these are the things I have integrated out all others I have integrated out all others I have integrated out but I have to keep the Boltzmann factor and then I say ok how many ways I can uh, get these uh, my reduced number of particles out of n particles the, how many ways I can pick them up then that is n factorial by n minus n factorial note that small n factorial not denominator because we still have the distinguishable particles in their uh, locations which these locations are given by this r n. We have not yet made that assumption that that positions can be intertwined I am not doing that yet ok. Then I of course, if I integrate over all of them then I should get equal to 1 ok that one is missing here, but I think the probably is there in the textbook. Now, so now I want to now go to the reduced description I want to know that I have only one here if I have only one part I want to know in this case let us consider inhomogeneous system there is a gravitational field external field. So, I want to know what is the probability one molecule here then what I do as I said I integrate over everything else. So, I integrate over all of that from 2 to n and from here I have n factorial by n minus because I now have small n equal to 1. So, I have n factorial by n my own factorial that is n by n z n, but I have integrated about everything else d 2, d 3, d r 3 all these things have been done. What do I get next? You can of course, guess what you get next. So, when you do that for a homogeneous liquid I can anyway integrate over because I can choose one molecule as the central molecule and everything else I can integrate over. The, then I integrate over the uh, last one. So, these dr2 dr3 with respect to the central tac molecule then the I last I integrate over the tac molecule that give me a volume V. If I do that they are the same then in a homogeneous liquid I get density single particle density is the number density. This is a trivial exercise, but important exercise that shows that I am formulating it correctly. 